This is the BBC. Hello and welcome to Comedy of the Week with me, comedian, actor and Moomin, Carrie Adloyd. It's been a tough week for me, guys. I've had a cold. Not just any cold, a proper blech cold, as if a cloud moved into my head with some other student clouds, then they had a party and then they were sick cloud everywhere and they're too hungover to clear it up. That kind of cold. So, I am overjoyed to bring you a comedy that will not only make you feel better... It will also make you feel better. It's that funny. This week's Comedy of the Week is Tim Vine's chat show. Tim Vine, if you don't know, why don't you know? Tim Vine is a wonder and a legend of the comedy scene. So here are some Tim Vine facts to get you prepped. He began stand-up in 1991. He was the first man to appear on Channel 5. His brother is radio's Jeremy Vine. His legs are grapevines. He can't walk, so he grapevines everywhere. His blood is actually glue vine. I did run out of actual facts there for you fact fans uh, if you can't tell which ones were true and which ones were false can I suggest you pull the car over now and stop driving done it great anyway the show is extremely silly and wonderfully funny and made me snort with laughter which is hard when you're this blocked up let me tell you so here is the Tim Vine chat show but who are his guests all the guests on the Tim Vine chat show are plucked from the audience on the night of recording the first time Tim meets them is when they walk up on stage <laughs> Welcome to the Tim Vine Chat Show tonight. We're coming from the Babacom Theatre in Torquay. And here comes your host on the crest of a wave. It's Tim Vine. Oh, I tell you what, what a week it's been. I entered a competition. I won a year's supply of Marmite. One jar. <laughs> Yes, this is the Tim Vine Chat Show, the show where you, the audience, provide all the entertainment, which can only mean one thing. What we need is a miracle. miracle. What we need is a miracle. miracle. And I believe in miracles, don't you? I do. You look like someone who likes to laugh, doesn't he? <laughs> so let's grab this one chance, and if this miracle comes true, Give that woman a round of applause! <laughs> Blake came up to me and said, do you want to use my ice rink for 10p? I thought, what a cheapskate. <laughs> Did you know if a stick insect lays his eggs in a jar of bovril, it would give birth to a litter of twiglets? <laughs> so there's a knock at my door today. I opened the door, bloke said to me, he said, can I talk to you about your carpets? I thought, that's all I need, a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I've got a friend who worships exhaust pipes. He's a Catholic converter. Come on. <laughs> anyway, a bloke came up to me, so I've fallen in love with two school bags. I thought, well, there you are, he's by Satchel. <laughs> but I was in Torquay last night. This bloke came up to me. He said, do you believe in ghosts? I said, of course I don't, you silly Elizabethan sailor. <laughs> I saw a sign that said, hairdressing for men. I walked in, there was a rabbit trying on clothes. And all these blokes going, yeah, very nice. <laughs> But I was, I, was, uh, I was outside earlier on and I saw this young man and he was swimming on his own, so I threw him a pair of binoculars. He said, what are these for? I said, you need supervision. <laughs> Can you remember the last time you ate rice pudding? No, no you got ambrosia, that's what that is. <laughs> Before we bring on the guests, we're going to have to have music. And tonight, we have a very special guest as the musical director. Yes, it's Dolly Parton's brother. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> yes, Dolly Parton's brother. Side. <laughs> and, of course, this show requires catchphrases, and that means that you're going to join in with them, ladies and gentlemen. And the first catchphrase is I say, what's been killed? And you say, the atmosphere. <laughs> Let's just try that. <laughs> what's been killed? The atmosphere. And the next catchphrase is I say to you, sir, do you like wearing shorts? Yes. You like wearing shorts. I like wearing shorts. We all like wearing shorts. That's right, we all say it together. And then the final catchphrase is I say, I like what you're doing, and then we all go together, but it's a bit too visual for radio. <laughs> Let's try that one. I like what you're doing, but it's a bit too visual for radio. 
Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the first guest? Yeah. You're ready for the first guest. I'm ready for the first guest. We're all ready for the first guest. What a thrill to have this man with us. He is a hairdresser and his name's John Bridgewater. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> Hello, John. So, John, you're a hairdresser? As you can see. Yes. Well, you can't on the radio, but you can here. Well, no. But... <laughs> well, it's true. Well, I can see. You I can, can see. see. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And as you can see with me, it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? My Absolutely. Hair. I'm yeah. catching you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's radio. Go with it. Yeah, I'm um, good. <laughs> You know, I went to the hairdressers the other day, there was a sign on the wall that said, all our haircuts, 20% off. I said, how can you be so accurate? <laughs> <laughs> What's the most popular hairstyle currently in Torquay, would you say? Uh, short back and sides. Oh, sorry, I asked. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Is that, so it's, that's been the most popular one for ages, isn't it? What's the next one? <laughs> oh, it's probably the mullet. The mullet? The mullet. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, the mullet. Yeah, whichever, yeah, it depends on where you come mullet. from. Yes. Well, what do you say? Uh, yeah, well, no, you know, I don't want to say, you know, you, you, it is, is, how do you pronounce it? Mullet. Mullet. Yeah, which is correct, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose so. Well, you put a bullet in a gun, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> let's imagine for a moment, you're the hairdresser, I'm the customer. OK, so let's just have the conversation. I've just walked in. What do you say to me? Oh, Tim, that's what a nice fine head of hair you've got on you. Have well, you're going to be sarcastic straight off. <laughs> If that's, if that's your attitude, I'll take my business elsewhere. Um, so I've walked in and I've said, uh, hello there. Let's just let's do a bit of role play, right? Hello there. Oh, good morning. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Yes, very well. I've come here for, well, a haircut, would you believe? <laughs> really? <laughs> I think we might be able to help you there. Oh, great. And, and how much does it, does, it, does it cost now? What's the general sort of haircut price? Uh, it's £7.50. All right. What's the 50 all about there? <laughs> Put the coin in for the electric for the meter. Oh, I see, so it really is. It genuinely... I was messing about, but you really need that. <laughs> right. <laughs> now then, look, I, I, uh, you've, got, you've got an extraordinary story here. You went to Australia... Yes. ..with your wife. Yes. What happened? Well, I've got a very short attention span. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on the beach with these... I think it's rubbing off on me, actually. <laughs> Yes, and you were on the beach. Yes. Yeah, and they had these catamarans that you could they hire. They had what? Cat catamarans. Cat catamaran. Is that like a normal meringue? But what's <laughs> a, what's, what's a, what it's is got it? a cat on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a classic meringue with a cat on it's it. It's a cat meringue, yeah. It's very funny. I'll say that again, then edit it in like it was my idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean like a meringue with a cat on it? <laughs> oh, that's clever. No, it was funnier the first time. Yeah, well... well <laughs> Um, there won't be a first time. Now, the, um... <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> so you and your wife got onto a catamaran. Yes. And what happened next? Tell us, John. Well, as I said, short... I've got a short uh, attention span. Memory, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one as well. Yes. So we listened to the instructions. What were the instructions? Well, I can't remember what they are now. <laughs> this was a long time. I couldn't remember them then. I'm not going to remember them now. No. Well, true. <laughs> so we took this boat out. Right. The wind was behind us. We was going along very nicely. Right. Then Forwards. the wind dropped, right. and well, I forgot how you tack it or whatever it's called. Right. So we were just drifting. Right. They're drifting, ladies and gentlemen. And we've been out for over an hour. Wow. And the so by now you're worried about the price. <laughs> well. <laughs> But we drifted out quite a way, and we got near to the nets where the sharks come into the... You got near to some shark nets? Well, the, the, the nets were to keep the sharks out from where you were. Oh. But we were very close to where the you, sharks you were. Went, you got near to somewhere that gets rid of sharks. Or stops, <laughs> the, stops the sharks getting near. Right. OK, so then we're look, probably looking for an ending now, but... We the, are. Um, <laughs> Unless your wife's eaten by a shark, I'm afraid this is not going to live up to expectations. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, so you, you, and, and then what happened? The guards realised that we weren't back at shore and they came out to us and said, where have you been? Right. And right. yes, as I say, we nearly got taken away by some sharks. But and you nearly got, we, nearly. And then, so that's what happened. That's what nearly happened. That's what nearly happened. <laughs> 
So that was kind of nearly a story, wasn't it? <laughs> it was almost a story. Yeah. John Bridgewater! Let's hear it for him! Do you know, I love words. I especially love uh, uh, short words, although short words are very easy to misspell, e.g. egg. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sing a song for you now to celebrate the first guest. It's called Waiting. Hit the music, please. <laughs> Waiting can sometimes be lots of fun. Not always. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the second guest? Yes. It's Georgina Delaval, balloon modeler. Let's hear it for her. <laughs> Have a seat there. Wow, we. You're a balloon modeler. I am. Well, and, and what sort of things do you, do you make out of balloons? Anything that I'm asked to make. Right. Is that really anything at all? Most things, yeah. Right. So what if I asked you to make um, an egg? Yeah, I can make an egg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just realised that's very one of the simpler ones. One, yeah, though. it's a bit easier, that one, yeah. Or, or a um, draft excluder. <laughs> So, and you, and you, but I mean, a balloon modeler, honestly, mm. blow me down. Um, um, <laughs> uh, well, blow me up actually, but, um, <laughs> but how did you get into that? Is that your, that's your, that's your job, your full time job? It's not my full time, it's my paid weekend hobby. Paid weekend hobby. So, what do you do when you're not um, blowing up balloons then? Oh, it's not as exciting, I'm an office manager. Oh, no, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not. <laughs> But what office manager for what? What sort of? What's the office? Uh, it's a daycare nursery for children, so not plant. Mm. Day, daycare nursery for. Yes. Right, and then, and then you and you're in charge of the office there, then. Yeah. Right? And all the right. Yeah. So these balloons. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I put balloon modeler. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not surprised you do that. It sounds, that's a great thing to do. But you once here's an extra, an extraordinary thing happened to you, didn't it, Georgina? It Tell did. us what happened. The other day, when yes. I was working in the dressing rooms at the Glastonbury Festival. What um, happened to your voice then? It went deep. <laughs> I'm really proud of this. <laughs> You were working in the dressing rooms of the Glastonbury Festival. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, somebody came into the dressing rooms and said, Oh, has anybody got any headache tablets? Because Johnny Depp's got a headache. Uh, I mean, that's classic, isn't it? I know. Yeah, so what did you do? You made him a balloon model? No. <laughs> hey, no. You, no, the squeaking would have made it worse. When yeah, it did. would actually, yeah. That's true, it's very annoying, that sort of oh. noise, isn't it? <laughs> That uh, yeah, Johnny Depp some, does, yeah. yeah. So the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you never didn't meet him, though, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You met Johnny Depp? Yeah. And Brad Pitt. <laughs> they were having a coffee together. It was really surreal. <laughs> Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt yeah. were having a coffee together? Yeah, next to where I was standing. Right. So I gave Brad Pitt some cider, but realised. Are you starting afterwards... to make all of this up now? <laughs> <laughs> No, this is absolutely true. Yeah, I think right. Brad Pitt had just come out of the rehab centre and I gave him a can of Thatcher's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw Johnny Depp, actually. Did I saw, you? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. Actually, he spotted me first. <laughs> um, <laughs> could happen. He came up to me, he said, he said, excuse me, he said, he said, are you Tim Vine? I said, yeah, I am, yeah. And he handed me an autograph book. He oh. said, can you sign this for me, please? I said, Johnny, this is the wrong way round. Because it was upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for a segment that I call, Look What I Found on the Beach. Look what I found on the beach. <laughs> so tell us, Georgina, what's the most interesting thing you've ever found on a beach? <laughs> Actually, I found half a pair of um, false teeth once in Weymouth. <laughs> 
found some dentures on a beach in Weymouth. I found some dentures on a beach in Weymouth. We all found some dentures on a beach in Weymouth. Let's hear it for Georgina. There she is. Georgina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, now, gentlemen, I'm going to play a song on the guitar. So let me just set this up here. Um, I, uh, the bloke said to me, he said, I'm going to attack you with the neck of a guitar. I said, is that a threat? <laughs> I used to have a box. I used to have a box. And I didn't know what was in it. I used to have a box I used to have a box And I didn't know what was in it No idea One day I picked it up One day I picked it up And I didn't know what was in it <laughs> Then, then I shook it some then, then I shook it some And I didn't know what was in it If you have got a box If you have got a box And you don't know what is in it Just give your box away Just give your box away then you could join with me and say, and say, I used to have a box. I used to have a box. And I didn't know what was in it. Come on, let's all sing it together. Here we go. I used to have a box. I used to have a box. And I didn't know. It surprised me, no one ever joins in with that. <laughs> Are you ready for the next guest? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is a retired farmer. Let's hear it for Peter Renu. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> So you, you're a retired farmer, and what? So was it was it arable, or, or did you enjoy it? <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> did you thoroughly enjoy it? Tell us what type of farming it was then. What was it? Yeah, cattle and sheep. Right. Okay. Right. And so, what's the best thing about being a uh, farmer of, of of cattle and sheep then? You're your own boss. You're your own boss. Yeah. You can sleep all day. Yeah. You're not mixing yourself up with a sheep, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> After that impression, I want to just quickly ask you if you were perhaps mixing yourself up with a cow as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog. Yes, it's a dog. You're going through the whole lot now, aren't you? That's great. <laughs> Did you have a sheep dog? Of course. Did you? Right, what was his name? She was called Tess. Tess, all oh, right. And did she, did she used to, to um, because I remember this farmer came up to me, he said, I've got 68 sheep, can you round them up for me? I said, sure, 70. <laughs> So did you do all that, <laughs> come by, come by, <laughs> like that? Did you do that? Well, I can't whistle, but I did the rest. All <laughs> oh, right, right. Well, you can do a good impression of a sheep. That'll do, won't it? <laughs> so what did you say? What sort of thing would you say if you wanted Tess to, to bring the sheep towards you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, up. Let, what? Or up. 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 Was he making them fly there? What happens there? <laughs> And further away, there. Get away. Get away? Mm -hmm. No, I'm being serious. Yeah, get away. <laughs> get away? Yeah. And then, are, are there any other commands? Yeah, come by. Come by? Yeah. You send him down the shops. <laughs> what's come, what's come by do? Well, get away is usually go around anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise? And come by is, is go around clockwise. That's very clever, isn't it? <laughs> that a dog can do that. That's incredible. And he really, so he really knew the difference between clockwise and anti-clockwise? 
Most of the time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, sort of about 50-50? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, something happened to you, didn't it? And was it on your farm this thing happened? Uh, no, I was uh, transporting a bull back from you Holdsworthy. Were... Right. What happened? Well, I, I bought this bull from a friend. And <laughs> for the... There's a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all done that. We've all done that, yeah. <laughs> yes, you bought a bull from a friend. Well, a, bu yeah. a bull, a mature bull... Yeah, as opposed to one of those immature ones who goes... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Start shouting at Tess and stuff and messing yeah. about, wearing a silly nose. A mature bull, yes. A mature bull weighs over a ton. Does he? Mm -hmm. Right, that's very, very heavy, isn't it? How did you get him home? In the boot? Um, <laughs> nearly. Right. Uh, I put him in the trailer, right. and the trailer itself weighs over a ton. Right, so it's but Unfortunately, tons. the only thing I had to tow the bull and the trailer with yes. was my Montego. <laughs> <laughs> and that's presumably uh, weighs less than what you're trying to tow currently? Considerably, yes. Right, right. Well, we were on the dual carriageway, and uh, he decided to uh, turn round in the trailer just as I was picking up speed on the dual carriageway, so... During that? Right, OK. Uh, unfortunately, it meant that the car was veering to and fro all over the place. Oh. And my dear lady wife right. was yes. scre screaming for me to stop. There right. wasn't a lot... She I wasn't in the trailer as well, was she? <laughs> 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 so you, you stopped? We managed to stop, yeah. 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 But it was one of those situations where you didn't dare touch the brakes. No, no. Just uh, keep going and, with the And float. the bull was, well, there we are. That's yeah, a, so there you go. That's quite something, isn't it? And, um... <laughs> it was pretty frightening. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's up there with, um, uh, a shark net. Um... <laughs> Let's hear it for Peter! <laughs> Peter, there he is! <laughs> We've got a very special guest who's going to sing a song for you now. And the song is called Jive Torquay. Obviously, roughly that area. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in need of her tonight. She's a laughter yoga teacher. It's Sue Haswell. Let's hear it for Sue. <laughs> Sue, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along. Thank you. It's, this is something we've... The, <laughs> this is something I've heard about. I've heard about it. I've even seen it in a newspaper and stuff like that. Laughter yoga. And so, how does... How, tell me, how does a session like that work? How does it work? I want to I want to learn. I want to learn. <laughs> well, we I'm not could so, do a session. Well, can we? We can. I mean, what, what, what do you say to people then? How does it start then? Okay, so first of all, this yes. will be really handy. Yes. You need to understand that fake laughter is as good for you as real laughter. Oh, I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so away you go. What happens? Okay, so... We are in your hands, aren't we, audience? <laughs> An audience at home as well. <laughs> Tune in at this point. Well, you must be tuned in if you can hear my voice. <laughs> Tune in to the words of Sue Haswell, laughter yoga teacher. Away you go, Sue. Fabulous, thank you. OK, so we understand that fake laughter is as good for us as real laughter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. And real laughter is immensely good for us. We don't right. laugh because we're happy. Actually, we're happy because we laugh. Laughter oh, releases... Hang on a minute. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. We don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. That's so... I thought it was the other way around. That's what I've been doing wrong. So oh. we can hack our emotions and Pardon? we can turn ourselves from being less happy to really happy just by putting a smile on and then doing a laugh. And usually, if people do a bit of fake laughter, yes. other people will watch that and actually they'll be doing real laughter. At the <laughs> No. <laughs> but nor did you. I didn't. <laughs> and it works. So, uh, you, I think it might help if we did it with one person. There's a nice atmosphere here. This gentleman here, you there in your white shirt, sir. What's your name, sir? Matthew. Matthew. Remember what Sue said? We don't laugh because we're happy. We're I happy can see that laugh. already in your face. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew. Speak to Matthew. Please, no laugh. Just for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see how Matthew does. Right. <laughs> Matthew, it'd be great to just smile at each other to begin with. <laughs> and perhaps make really close eye contact. And perhaps try some fake laughter, but we'll do it this way. So I'll just say, my name's Sue. <laughs> and if you say, my name's Matthew, and laugh in a fake way, and maybe turn to the audience while you do it, that'd be great. My name's Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, have you thought about teaching this yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for Matthew and for Sue! <laughs> Sue! It's been a truly spectacular evening here with you, it really has. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to do an impression for you now of a sarcastic town crier. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> But as we reach the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen, I have one... I have one word, though, that comes to mind. Do you know what that word is, sir? Do you know what it is? Gratitude. <laughs> you guys... Thank you for sharing your stories with me. Every single one of them was extraordinary. said you guys apparently sea air makes your skin soft to touch and looking at you sir you don't get out much <laughs> is that a barnacle on your chin I said you guys what a great time we've had it was an evening and a half we don't laugh because we're happy. We're happy because we laugh. <laughs> You've been inspired. I've been inspired. We've all been inspired. Keep laughing, talking. Good night. <laughs> the Tim Vine Chat Show is produced by Richard Morris and is a BBC Studios production. That was the brilliant Tim Vine's Chat Show. I think Tim is actually a bit of a genius because that was an utterly delightful half hour of radio. My favourite Tim Vine story is that one year at the Edinburgh Fringe, he didn't have a show, but he took out a billboard at the bottom of the Royal Mile, which said Tim Vine in massive letters, and then at the bottom is not appearing at this year's festival. It was wonderful and stupid and brilliant just like him. And you can listen to the rest of the series on the BBC iPlayer radio or follow him on Twitter for more brilliant one-liners. Are you still feeling ill? Then head over to the Comedy of the Week pages on the BBC Radio 4 website where you can see past interviews, the latest episodes and a list of comedy's greatest one-liners. If you're not better after you've done all that, you better find the ghost of Bob Monkhouse and complain to him. Not us. 
So keep your laughter tears flowing, lick up their salty goodness, mmm, the salty tears taste so nice, and join me, Carrie Lloyd, for another Comedy of the Week in a week. <laughs>